over the last 30 years. Over the last 30 years. Over the last 30 years. Over the last 30 years, we've learned that climate change exists, it's happening, and we're now convinced that within reasonable time scales, that if left alone, the outcomes could be uh, extraordinarily bad. Developing countries typically have more people concentrated in climate sensitive activities, such as agriculture. Their economies are more sensitive and they're going to have to come to grips with a warmer world. And this is regardless of what we do in terms of mitigation, in terms of reducing the amount of greenhouse gases that we have. We're going to get some warming is built into the system and developing countries are going to have to deal with that. They have to develop as their climates and temperatures are becoming essentially more uncertain. We don't know what's going to happen. And they're going to have to do it with a different energy mix than has been done in the past. Less coal, less oil, more solar, more hydropower, more renewables. And, and this is the big challenge. For a given amount of greenhouse gas that goes into the atmosphere, how much warming are we going to get? The other thing that we really don't know is how much greenhouse gas are we going to put into the atmosphere from now until the end of the century. If we put those two sources kind of together, you end up with a range of anywhere from about two and a half degrees Celsius warmer than it is now or was just a little while ago uh, to up to 10. The top end of that range is very, very bad. We actually don't know where very, very bad begins. We certainly don't want to see temperature rises 5 degrees centigrade, 6 degrees centigrade, 7 degrees centigrade. That's talking about the, basically the total transformation of the environment on the planet as we know it. So those outcomes we want to avoid for sure. Can you build a renewable system, a pan-African grid, rooted in hydropower? Hydropower is a relatively inexpensive and clean source of electricity. The other advantage to a big grid is it complements potentially very nicely the solar and the wind and the other renewables. With solar, you don't get power at night. And with wind, you only get it when the wind blows. You don't get it when you want it. It's going to be windy. It's going to be sunny somewhere in Africa. So if you're doing it over the whole continent, you're going to generate a more constant average power output. Over the next 30 years, over the next 30 years. Over the next 30 years. Over the next 30 years, we're going to need to develop. We have a billion people living in absolute poverty. They're going to have to do that in the context of increasing temperatures and increasing uncertainty about what's going to happen to their rainfall and precipitation. And they're going to have to do that with new sources of energy. We're going to have to emit less through the entire process, or at least arrive at a point through that. And these are things that haven't been done uh, before all three.